Hi there folks, my name's Neverwing24 from msflights.net and here I'm going to present a little tutorial today on how to join into a multiplayer session. Um, so we're going to start off, we're going to start off with the Steam edition of FSX because the thing is, is that they're slightly different. Um, unfortunately I'm going to start off by saying they're not compatible. Um, so if you've got Steam edition you can't play on servers that are running the boxed edition and vice versa, boxed edition users can't play on Steam edition servers at this time. Um, there are uh, a couple of developers out there who are rumoured to be working on possible cross-platform compatibility, uh, but at this time, it's uh, if yeah, you've got to stick with one or the other. So yeah, there you go. Uh, so, but we're going to start with FSX Steam Edition because, of course, that is the big shiny news that's been out most lately, and uh, what a lot of people are starting to pick up and use. All right, so. Uh, it's actually really, really easy for the Steam Edition. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty disgustingly easy, actually. Uh, so literally, once you've logged in, uh, you jump straight down into Multiplayer. There we are there. And uh, you get two options here, Internet via Steam or LAN. Um, you will almost never need to use the LAN one, um, unless you are uh, connecting on a local area network. Uh, normally you'll be using the internet via Steam one. Now this will be pre-populated with your Steam user ID. And you just simply go sign in, and go connect to Steam, and bang, there we go. Alright, so you'll then see a list of servers currently available. Uh, now, it will be sorted by ping time. Now, I just want to quickly mention something on ping times. Now, I know ping times for those who play a lot of first-person shooters and stuff like that, are, you know, it's all, everything is, you know, hallowed at the grounds of the, at the old sacrifice of the altar of ping times. Um, guys, ping times aren't actually as big a deal for flight sims as they are for first person shooters, they're really not. Uh, so it's more important to have a stable connection. Uh, so yeah, the, the ping time, you can have a, as long as it's not red, you will be more than fine, you really will. Anyway, uh, so as you can see, uh, msflights.net, do, we do have a couple of servers going on uh, fairly regularly at the moment, um, of course the AU1, which is just near me, but uh, a lot of you guys will be connecting to one of the, uh, we've got a European server as well, uh, which is based in Spain, uh, and then we've got a couple of American ones as well. So we're going to connect to this one here, a fairly popular one, this one, we're going to be jumping into that. So literally, to connect to your server, click it on the list, double click, in my case, and it goes straight through. And there we are, we're in. So we can see that the host aircraft is there. We've got uh, another user, Phil's at Isaac. So welcome, Phil, for making the cameo appearance in the video here. Uh, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to quickly uh, grab an aircraft. Now, what should we get today? Uh, you know what? I feel like flying. I feel an L39. Yes, there we go. So look, yes. Yeah, let's do this one. I like the look of this one. Okay, Air L39. Now, gonna, now, so you you got your aircraft there. Now, by default, the aircraft will have a AC or a tail code number. Um, it's always a good idea to change this to something that is actually can identify you in. Uh, so, for example, I usually fly with the Nova 24 uh, call sign and tail number. I know it's not a real one, but hey, you know, it's it's pretty popular and well, it's not popular, but it's, it, it makes it easily identifiable for me. So there you go. Uh, all right, so. Uh, Getting onwards, uh, now, if you want to be able to share your aircraft, um, you can select, select this. Um, I personally don't do it a great deal, uh, but just so, for those who do wish to share aircraft, you have to have the exact same aircraft, uh, the exact same config files, the exact same paint scheme as well, otherwise it will crush and it doesn't like it at all. So, yeah, I, yeah, it's up to you if you want to do it. Personally, don't do it, but yeah, it can, some people enjoy it, it can be useful can be a bit interesting as well, so there you go. Anyway, uh, at an airport, my, so essentially you can go, you get the option of at an airport of my choice, in the end of the host, or the airport uh, nearest the host aircraft. Easiest one I always recommend is go to an airport of my choice. Um, if you use either of these ones, it can play hell with your experience. It'll do all sorts of funny things, spawn you all sorts of places. Um, I, I don't recommend it, really don't. So we're going to... Go at an airport of my choice. Uh, now, uh, let's have a look. This is probably the one bad thing at the moment of the Steam Edition is that is um, because there's no integration for some of the other multiplayer stuff out there like FS Open. We can't actually see what's. You can't look at a website and see what's um, what is actually you know light and what's dark and stuff like that. So that's probably the only thing. But anyway, uh, all right. So I'm going to go to YBBN. 
Brisbane International. So you sort of select that, so you type the ICAO there. Um, you can also search by city, narrow by country, region, whatever you want to do, but yeah, I uh, just You've become familiar with airfields that you know and frequent a lot, so you'll learn the cut. You'll you'll learn the OKS. So Brisbane International, make sure it's selected there. Then we go down here to choose your starting position. Now, piece of advice: never, ever use a runway as a spawning location. Okay, unless you absolutely have to. Particularly, don't use the active runway. Um, it's just courtesy. It really is. Otherwise, yeah, just choose. It. Most airports will have at least a fuel box or something you can spawn at. Otherwise, there'll be plenty of gates for you to park at and stuff like that. So yeah. I am going to move over to we're gonna go go the ramp the GA. That sounds like a plan. Alright. And we go okay. Done done done. And then we're ready to fly. So we go okay. And this will take you sort of like a, the briefing room. Um so this is where you sort of take a final checks, make sure that everything adds on that you want here, and then you go join session. Alrighty. zaps and loads in and all this kind of fun stuff. Now, one thing that catches a lot of people, very unwary, first time especially when you do this, is that they wonder why is things not working. It's because it's paused. So, and, oh, a little bit dark, but that's okay. So, uh, now, if you've still got your things like I do at the moment, you've still got your sort of simulation pause, you some of the flashing screens on there, so just hit P to unpause, and there you go. Alright. Alright, so we'll put our parking brakes on. Our lights on. Do, do, do. Have a look at the outside. Ah, there it is. Beautiful L39. That is cute. So there we are. We're, we are in the session. Now I'm going to quickly check where the winds are. Oh, I'm jumping the cockpit view. Release our brakes. Now, uh, the pushback, by the way, is Shift P. Uh, so it allows you to aircraft to sort of be pushed back as if there was a tractor there or something. Do, 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 do. Just give it a bit of clearance. Now we're at 10 knots from 1 4. Now the runways here are 1 9 and 0 1. So I think 1 9 is going to be the, the runway that we're going to use here quickly. But this is pretty much it, really. Um, so I suppose we may not even end up getting off the ground, I suppose. But yeah, that's essentially that's simply it. You are in a session. Um, you can now you know actually go around and do stuff. And get everything organised, and try not to run into terminal buildings. It's always a good thing. Do 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 do. There we go. We taxi out. But yeah, as I said, you're pretty much. This is all there really is to it when it comes to getting into a multiplayer session. As I said, with Steam, really, really easy. Um, you can get along very quickly is just simply look at the server you want to join, double click on it and off you go. So I think we shall pretty much just leave it there. I think it's probably the easiest way to do it. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to jump out of this one. Oh, it's probably what I'll show you is one thing as well with the Steam Edition uh, that is kind of cool. If you hit enter, uh, it actually brings up your chat box. Now this also integrates with the chat box for Steam as well, so you can actually get your Steam notifications and all your Steam friends list appears as well, so you can actually go through them uh, and have a chat to all your friends on there as well. Always useful. So, alright, well that's as I said, pretty much it when it comes to spawning into a multiplayer session. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to get out of this one. We're going to end our little uh, session here in Steam. And uh, we'll be back in just a moment and show you how to do it in the Boxed Edition. Alrighty folks, so we are back and this time we are backed with Boxed Edition. So as I said, I want to go through the slight differences for getting online uh, with the Boxed Edition versus the Steam Edition. So we've seen how easy it is on Steam and Steam Edition. Boxed Edition's a little bit more complex. So Boxed Edition used to rely on GameSpy uh, for its you know nice easy multiplayer setup. Uh, as we know, GameSpy has gone the way of the dodo. Uh, so uh, the great guys, uh, various people out there have come up with different ways around it. So uh, there is now a way to actually connect via using the LAN option, uh, but now you to connect to servers all over the world. Now, a couple of little bits of preparatory uh, work needs to be done here. Uh, mainly, you need to find, do some research, find out who you want to, like, which multiplayer server you want to connect to, and find out what their IP address is. Okay, so once you've got that, uh, you jump into here, so you go to local area network connection. Remember, we didn't do that with Steam, um, so we're doing that with the boxed edition. Uh, type in your player name, uh, obviously me, obviously. Uh, then you go sign in. 
Now what it'll do is it will go here. Now it'll go blank. Nothing found because it's looking on your local area network and of course there's nothing going on. Now you go down here to the option where it says connect directly. Now connect directly into your IP address. So uh, the IP address that you see here is the msflights.net uh, main uh, box edition server. Uh, they keep running up pretty much 24-7. So you jump, jump onto here, so type in the address, uh, the IP address here, which can be found on the msflights.net website. Type that in and then go find session. Uh, it'll take a few moments and it will go da 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 da. go. So as you notice, the connection took a little bit longer because uh, it is sort of using a few back-end stuff, so uh, it's not as fast a uh, connection uh, or instantaneous as the one for Steam is, but still, it gets there and it's very solid and stable once you get there. Otherwise, the menu, the menu here looks pretty much exactly the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into our L39 again today. Now I've got a few more aircraft loaded in my box edition, so this takes a little bit longer to load up. Alright, scroll up here, and there we go. Select him. Update our ATC name again, of course. One, two, four. Go. Okay, so, and then we go down to here again, same options that we had before, so we're going to go back to Brisbane International again, YBBN, there we go, alrighty, and we're going to go down to, uh, where were we before? Okay, this one. So I do have an add-on airport for this one, so it does have a larger range of uh, different options that I've got there. Uh, because yeah, I do have the wonderful Orbix uh, version of YBBN installed. Uh, so we'll just go. As you can see, there's a lot more options there. So I'll just go. Yeah, we'll go for that one. Twenty frame large. Okay. Okay. Selected and done. And then we go. Okay. So same again. Uh, we've got a little message there from the guys at msflights.net, and then we go join session. Otherwise, yeah, it pretty much looks uh, exactly the same, really does. So let it load up. There we go, we are in, and oh, I think we're there. Same as before though folks, yeah, it is. Uh, it does come in paused, uh, so we might just uh, tuck ourselves out of the way of all this ground equipment, might we? Uh, do, do, do. Do, do, do. We'll just slide out of the way here, don't mind this folks. Do, 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 do. Alright, okay. There we are. So just just ignore that that happened, folks. All right. Okay. So there we are, and where we are, we are in session. So as I said, folks, it's as easy as that. Uh, you do still have the text chat option that you had with the Steam Edition, but obviously it doesn't have a friends sort of system uh, with that because obviously GameSpy is dead and it is just land networks. But you still see the people who are in the session and you can still chat to them and put your commands in and stuff like that. So yeah, as I said, I just want to give you guys a quick little uh, introduction as to how you can access the, mold, the wonderful world of multiplayer for FSX, uh, whether you're using Steam or whether you're using Box. So I uh, look forward to seeing everybody in Simulator Skies very, very soon. As I said, you can always join the group team over at msflights.net. Just, just join us here at any of our group flights. Just check out for all the details at msflights.net. Alright folks, well thanks very much for watching. This has been another tutorial delivered to you uh, by Novawing24 from msflights.net. Thanks very much for watching. Take care, say skies to all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.